Thank you, Ana Maria, for being with us. <laughs> You're welcome anytime. Hi, everybody. I hope everybody's doing okay. Uh, Happy New Year. We're still on that range. And Happy King's Day. For those of us who are from um, Latin uh, or Hispanic cultures, this is a very important day for us. Even though here, not too many people follow it. Um, what I'm going to really appreciate, Teresa, in case somebody has any questions and I don't see it at the moment, just let me know, okay? I will, I will. Okay, thank you so much. So we're going to start uh, talking about this tool that as any tool that you use, it depends on how well or how bad you use it. And one of the most important things I always talk about to um, the students is the importance of giving the answers as close as you honestly um, behave or things that you like or dislike. Because like any other process, this tool is like a machine that processes information. And if the input is not accurate, of course you won't get accurate results. So when you get the results, there is a, a long report that I'm going to ask you to be patient. I'm going to show, if you allow me, I'm going to share um, the screen so that we can follow briefly, not in very deep details, because you are going to have enough time at home with your parents or yourself to, to see the report and get the most important issues about it, okay? So I'm going to, okay, let me know if everybody can see my share screen. Thumbs up if you do. Okay, I think everybody's okay. Okay, the long report that you are going to be able to see is, is as you can see, is 41 or 42 pages on um, a PDF file. And it has two uh, main blocks. The first one is the personal approach that talks about personalities. How are you perceived by people outside and how you perceive people from the outside. It has to be with personality. Second uh, group, it has to do with the core drivers and is the strength that you were born with. And some of the times you're gonna be surprised because you don't realize that you have them. The third group is the amplifiers and it has to do with your style for learning and recommendations about, uh, according to your style for learning recommendations, how to connect your brain with your body in order to learn. And the last one is the aptitudes in action. And it's like, um, it's, it's like a conclusion about all the strengths that you have and how you can apply that to either uh, your work environment, your study environment, your family environment, everything. Because this tool is not, is not only for being able to uh, choose the best career adapted to your strength and the things that you like, the things that you feel passion for. But this tool applies to every aspect in your life. That is why I always make emphasis on taking this tool very seriously because it's going to help you the rest of your life on your relationships and on your decision making. Is, do I make myself clear? Thumbs up? Okay, so let's go. This is an example of somebody who took uh, the test. Let's talk a little bit about the personal approach. It tells you... Um, what is your natural approach to people? In this case, when we see the personal approach, um, it talks about the interpersonal style. It could be extra people who are comfortable, you know, being surrounded by many people and and love to be like um, like the glue, you know, of the group. Or we have people who are intro, people who need time and space to think and process information and get energy. So in this in this case, when we study it, it was an introvert. It says you are the best in small group. 
I want to make here an emphasis on it. Here, nothing is bad or good. Nothing. Everything has its own characteristics. And the importance of this is that you are aware what your characteristics are and you are able to apply it to your everyday life. So in this case, it was an introvert. It says you are the best in a small group and it gives a small recommendations for success, okay? Like you draw energy from, from time being alone and you enjoy interaction with other on your own terms, okay? Um, and they, they explain things are going to be easier for this type of personality and things are gonna be difficult. And as I said, nothing is good, nothing is bad. This is according to your features, what you should do and what should you try to stay away from. And um, on the second uh, feature, it comes the time frame orientation and it has to do with what is time for you. There are people who like to have goals in the short term, like goals, like in two or three months, something really quick. And some people who love to have uh, goals on the long range. For example, uh, some of you guys could be thinking about, okay, I'm gonna be uh, a doctor and I'm gonna be a um, special cardiologist, for example. So your goals are very different from the ones that are in the short term. Like I'm going to get my uh, bachelor's degree, but in both cases, it is important that when you have goals, if it is in the short range, that those goals are tied to something that you have to visualize in the long term. Do I make myself clear? It's always very important to have in mind what do I want to be or to have in the long range and tie your short term um, goals and long term goals together so that you don't go disperse, okay? And you waste time trying to find out what, what do I need to do? What do I want to be? Um, and then, okay, of course I give you the recommendations, what is gonna be easier for you, what is going to be difficult for you. And then comes um, the work approach and it has to do with your capacity, and I always put the example of, of the camera lens. When you have a camera and, and when the lens is open, you can see the whole picture. If it is a city, for example, you can see everything like the cars, the people walking, the, the buildings. Um, there is a big zoo in one side. Uh, there is a, um, a garden on the other side. You can see everything. That's the point of view of a generalist, people who are able to see the whole picture and how do they relate to each other. Those are the generalists. That's a big group. And the other group is talking about the lens of the camera. When you close the lens, okay, and you can focus in the city example for, you can see the traffic and that's the person or the, the lens who is going to be able to explain what kind of traffic what is the most important brand? Uh, what is the, um, the most popular car? What is the time of traffic? What are the streets that are you know, more, um, with, with more cars or less cars? And that's the point of view of the specialist. And it, we are uh, people, we are like that. Some are generalists and some are specialists. The specialists, they focus on one theme and is their passion. They develop and they are specialists. They like to be heard from uh, other people. They give advice. They are the ones who know um, more about a special topic. And this point is very important that you start identifying what is your passion? What is what is what you really like to do? It could be anything sports, art, music. But at this point, it's important that you start thinking, what is it that really I feel comfortable and I love to do? Because your work approach, if you're going to be a specialist, 
is going to give you hints about what subjects I'm going to be taking in school, um, what uh, groups I'm going to be able to be associated with because I'm developing my passion, okay? Um, that's the work approach. Vocabulary, always, I make emphasis, boys and girls, never stop developing your vocabulary because no matter if you are intro, if you are extra, if you are generalist, if you are a specialist, the way you are able to express yourself to transmit knowledge is your vocabulary. And the vocabulary is like a, another box with, with tools that you never know when one of those little tools is going to be able to make you successful, okay? So keep in mind, always develop your vocabulary. Um, then, okay, let's talk about the core drivers. Um, remember that it has to do with your natural strength, strength you are born with. When we talk about the visual comparison speed, it has to do, and I always put the example of a scanner. Some scanners, they go like, look, look, and they take the pictures, you know, step by step. It takes some time until it has the whole picture. While there are some scanners that ju they just go like, Shook. just one scan, it takes the whole picture. We people were like that. Sometimes it takes us time to spot um, errors uh, on like in a, on a report, but some people are really fast and just taking a quick look they are able to detect errors. In this test, they, they tell you where you are located. And it's important that you know that because, and I always give this example, if you are in a study group, okay, and you are working on a report and it's two o'clock in the morning and the report has to be ready at eight in the morning, somebody has to take a look at the final report and, and you know detect errors or something. If you, in visual comparison speed, if you are the one who detects, you know, taking spots and taking time, you know, I don't, I don't want to do this because I'm sure that somebody else in your group has that facility to detect errors immediately. So this is important too, that you learn to uh, identify strengths in others and respect that and use that uh, in pro of getting your uh, goals. Do I make myself clear? Anna, there is yes. one question um, from Amalia. Amalia, um, can you tell us what um, what do you need? What do I need? Anna, no, I'm sorry, Amalia. I, I'm just asking Amalia. Yeah. Oh. Uh, can we go back to natural strengths? I'd like to see that slide a uh, little better, please. To go back to where I'm sorry, natural strength. The previous slide, I believe it was okay. that one. Okay, your core drivers, the core drivers. Okay, yeah, the core drivers has to do when you ask when the kid answered the test. Okay, it comes out with strength that you are born with natural strength, and it has to do with visual comparison speed. That's the first one that I'm talking about. It has to do with spatial visualization that has to do with your capacity to visualize or keep in mind the three dimensions, put it in three di dimensions, something that you are taking a look in two dimensions. And inductive reasoning has to do with your decision-making style. Idea generation, if you generate ideas, like, like uh, ideas for everything, like the dream, uh, what we call the group of the uh, dream makers, they generate ideas with no stopping, or if you belong to the group that focus on one goal to generate ideas for that goal. We have the sequential reasoning, and we'll see that's the capacity you have to do to plan according to, if you are able to go from chaos to organize systems, or if you're able to follow something that is already organized. And the numerical reasoning, your capacity to uh, deal with math. What, what are numbers for you? Okay. 
Does, does it answer your question? Okay, remember that you are going to be able to see that in your um, on your own report, everything is there. And I really recommend don't take this, like, you know, I'm gonna just take a look now, just take your time, read it very carefully and understand what's on it. Because this is very important for your future life, for the kiddos life, okay? Okay. So we went on the visual, the inductive reasoning, okay? It has to do, as I mentioned before, about your decision-making process. Uh, some people um, just look at some uh, facts or numbers and they are able to quickly come to a decision. And I always put the example of people working on the, um, it has to do with business or, uh, um, when you go into the market, um, like stock marketing, those people, they have to make decisions like in seconds, just with the information they have. And it's easy, it's easy for them to do it because they, they feel passion for it. They like it. Some other people like myself, we take time. We, we take data, we analyze it. It takes time for us to, to make a decision. So it is very important that you find out where you are located. And I repeat, nothing in, is bad or good in here. This is a matter of identifying where you belong to, where you feel comfortable and happy. Because this inductive reasoning is very important when you are going to choose like a major. What majors you know, could be requiring that I make decisions with just um, a few information things or or if I can take my time you know to come to a conclusion that's typical for specialists so this is very important that you are clear about where you are on that um, spectrum like in this case um, this person he says um, we call this kind of thinker a fact checker you are the steady voice of prudence it means this person needs time to come to a, a conclusion feeling comfortable takes time analyze to analyze okay um okay the next one has to do with the sequential reasoning and it has to do and the example that i always put in here is like okay there is a family vacation and dad can say, okay, uh, Jose, Pepe, Maria, uh, we're going one week to California, plan the vacation. So there are two group of person. One group that really loves to do that, okay, from scratch, from zero, I'm going to plan everything. So let's see, we begin here in Houston. Let's see how many days, uh, what attractions we have on the way, where can we stop? Okay, and then it has the whole plan made. And it, it says that here is, is the vacation. You just check it. Some other group, okay, don't feel comfortable going from chaos. Where do I begin? Um, I don't know if this is, this is the best. Uh, how long can we take in here? But if that person says that, do you have any idea what um, places we need to go? What attractions you want us to be? And then you take that information, but you already have a structure and then you follow it and you make it better, okay? Because you can go back to your dad and say, hey dad, instead of being um, two days in Nevada, for example, why don't we stay there just one day and that extra day we can take it in California, uh, going to this attraction that you didn't think about it. So those two groups are very important, okay? The ones who, Plan from scratch, from zero. Everything is chaos and you put it in on a structure from A to Z. And the other group loves to have the structure from A to Z and make it better. Find the things that you can improve. So the two groups are very important, but it's crucial that you identify where do I belong? Okay, questions? Um, special visualization, as I said, mentioned before, this has to do with the capacity. Um, 
for you to put on your mind on three dimensions, something that is in two dimensions. And, and this is the typical example. And I always laugh about it because when you are going on that trip, okay? And then it's time to go on the car and then you have the whole bunch of, you know, the luggage. You need to put it in the trunk of the car. And then if you are very strong on spatial visualization, immediately you see and you say, hey, you know what, Dad? The, we won't be able to fit this in the trunk. And then if that is like I am, that in spatial visualization, I'm zero, I'm gonna say, oh yeah, we can fix that, let's see. And then you start and struggling and until you realize you were right, this won't fit in here. It's because the kid has that strength of spatial visualization and said, see, I noticed that if you rotate it this way, as you did, anyway, it won't fit there. So that's this is a strength that is very important for careers, like not only engineering, architecture, but careers like dance choreographers, believe it or not, um, art. So when you are thinking about um, a career and think about this, if you have this strength or not, and how this strength is related to that career. Do I make myself clear? Okay, good. Let me tell you something. In here, simple things like in the kitchen, when you have leftovers and you are going to put the leftovers on you know, containers, if you are good on, on this, you know what container to use for every leftover. If you are like I am, I'm always using the wrong one or it is too small or it is too big because it has to do with this capacity, with this strength, okay? Okay, idea generation. Um, two groups in here, the ones that, um, so, you know, it's like, like a, a water faucet when it is totally open, people generate ideas non-stopping. And this is typical example of people who can make commercials. They are really good for marketing and advertisement because they are dreamers. There is nothing that stops them. This is nothing is impossible. Or uh, those movie script makers that you think about after the movie, how could they, you know, think about these? Or, or there is the other group that they control that vow and they said, okay, focus. We have an objective here and we're going to generate ideas. Focus on this target. Both groups are very important. They complement each other. So it's important that you are aware of which group you belong to. In this case, the guy is that you've got a gusher for a brain. This is the one that you know generates ideas non-stop. If somebody has to say, hey, stop here, we need to focus. Um, numerical reasoning. It has to do with numbers. Some kids say, oh, you know, I don't like math. But when you think about it, like if, you are, if your passion is sports, this kid can, can say, this player is gonna go really far because look at, um, when you see at the numbers, okay. So that, that kid is using math, using it, the numbers as information. And we do this for everything in our life, even though you're aware or not. So some people can read inside uh, the data. And if you are aware of that, you are going to apply it. You're going to use it. Some of you have it and you don't realize it. So in this case, it's like we call thinkers like you a numerical detective. You can read inside the data. And these are the recommendations and activities for um, that type of, um, of feature or personality, okay? And amplifiers, um, this is how you, how you learn or how your brain connect to your body in order to learn. And numerical computation is related to the last one I mentioned, uh, math. In this case, math is a breeze for you. You are able to use numbers. You are able to make calculations in your head. And in case you are not, you don't like this too much, nowadays, 
There are so many resources, computers, um, uh, calculators, you name it. Nowadays, if you don't have this strength, no problem. You have to be smart enough to use the correct ones at the correct time. Okay, this is this one is very important to me because this has to do with how you memorize. Um, some people, you know, they, they are like a data magnet. Everything sticks on their heads, no problem. Some people, like in my case, I have to associate uh, something that I need to memorize. For example, um, uh, the plate of my car, okay? Kentucky Fried Chicken, 99 pieces. That's how I remember the plate of my car. So that's associative memory. And it has to do with, if I need to memorize something like in biology, if I'm studying parts of the body and their functions, I know that I have associative memory. I need to use like a big or small letters, different colors, uh, sticky notes, uh, cards with different colors. Anything that helps me to memorize, I need to use it. And remember, nothing is bad in here. It's just a matter of style. How am I am I able to retain information? So they give you some tips for success, what you need to do. And by the way, my memory, as I told you, is associative. Some people don't need anything to memorize. I do. And the hand and eye coordination, it has to do if you learn only um, by watching, and then after watching or reading, you are able to stand up and do everything. If it is like a choreography, you are able to do it from beginning to the end. Another style is you need to go step by step, okay? Learn the first step, practice it, do it. You are a doer, and then go to the next step until you have the whole choreography. Do I make myself clear? This is very important too, because this is how your brain get the information and transmit it to your body and you're able to learn. In this case, listen to the recommendation. When you practice slow, you learn fast, okay? That means that you need to practice, you need to do it, you are a doer. This is what we call kinetics. So people learn, you know, moving or listening, it, not only watching, but you are auditive or you need to, sometimes you read, need to read loud so that you can hear yourself. So it's important that you identify where, where am I? Um, visual memory has to do with what I mentioned before, what kind of uh, memory, how do you memorize if you're quick memorizing or, or if you need some resources in order to keep the information inside your brain. Now, the pattern memory if it, uh, has to do with math, that you are able to identify patterns in like in photograph or, or maps or graphs. It's important that you Identify yourself. Some people are good, like uh, reading maps. Some people really need the GPS to hear instructions. Okay. Now, after you read everything, all the features that you have on the results on your test, then the most important thing in here is that you go to the results and you're going to find yourself in this graph. Where are you in here? Are you introvert? Are you extrovert? Are you in the middle? That this is a feature that is, is when you read the results, if you belong here, you are like the interconnection between two worlds. And you need to be aware of that because with this globalized world, uh, it's very important these people in here. Everybody's important here, but according to time, uh, place, you, you need to be able to relate everything for you to be successful. Remember the goal of using this tool is that we have successful, but also happy people. That means 
you need to be aware of your strength and you need to be aware what strengths make you happy. In this case, this person is an introvert and specialist. That means when you are going to choose careers, you need to be aware of this, what careers, because if you're a specialist and you're introvert, okay, for example, you wouldn't like to, to work um, in, with careers where you have to be exposed to many people at the same time and you need to talk to many people, you need to be like the leader for everything, uh, beginning conversations. So when once you have this, okay, when, when you know where you are located here, then you can go to, okay, oh, here. Are you able to see my page right now? Okay, so you go here and then we already talk about interpersonal style, about talents, about work approach, everything you understand here where you are. The next step, you need to go here, best fit careers. You click on it. Once you click on it, you are going to see a whole bunch of careers related to your strengths and your passions, according to the results of your test. The next um, assignment that I would say you need to go through is gonna take a while. This is nothing that you're going to be able to do it quickly. It's gonna take weeks maybe, because you need to go on each one of them. See, you see the whole bunch of careers. The first group, the green top, those are the ones that are very close to your profile, your strength and your passions. And then the next group, it has another color, the blue color, is that they're a little bit away, okay, from the best fit. It doesn't mean they are bad, okay? And you are going to see that later. And then there is another group, uh, I think it's the orange color. Wow, it has a lot of careers. Yeah, the orange group that's more is is farther away from your um profile. Doesn't mean they are bad. You need to go one by one of them. So let's see one of them. Like for example, uh okay, uh food science technician. For example, you click on it, and the first thing. The very first thing, don't look at anything else that you're going to read is this, a day in the life. You read this. It says food science technicians measure and analyze the quality of food and agricultural products, products under the supervision of scientists. And then you read everything. This is one day in the life of that specialist. Close your eyes. Visualize yourself doing that the rest of your life and being happy. Listen to your heart and feel your skin. If you say, if you feel, oh yeah, I love, I would love to do this the rest of my life, then just save it, okay? Save it. That's the very first filter, I would say. Don't look at anything else, okay? Don't Think about this is the cool one. This is what mom and, and dad like because it's your life, it's your future that we're talking about in here. So if you feel that you, you save it and, and that way you're gonna start making your own uh, database. That's the very first filter. Then after you are doing that, then you can come to this, the rest of one by one. Here are the core tasks. This is what they do. How this career fits you and look, this is your profile matched to the ideal conditions for, for this career. See how close this person is? Sometimes it went above. And this is according to your strength. And the blue ones is this according to your passion, what you really like. It's very important that they are as close as possible and that, that you picture yourself where you are here in this career. And then you can see some sponsors for this career and you come down to this group. 
related careers you might be interested in, don't go over this too uh, quickly because they could also like you because they are related. Go again on each one of them and see if you can save it, put it on your database or not. And then it explains what do you need to study to get there, okay? Um, they, if they recommend going on a master's degree, PhD degree, and then the best majors um, or career programs, they explain each one of them and they expect the expected job openings and salaries. And this is so, I mean, this is so amazing because in the United States, you, you are able to go state by state. When, when you see the red one, you see that career on, on there. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. But wherever it is green, for example, here in Texas, then you click on it and then you see the average salaries. Okay, now there are other factors coming into that you need to uh, analyze. Um, this is only in Texas, the projection in 10 years, you can see it here. And then you can see it nationally, the same thing, but all over the United States. The growth rate, uh, the, the salaries, the average salaries, and the jobs related to this career, okay? See all the, um, the, the jobs that you, can, that you could apply to. Okay, and then it says here, ready to take the next step? Save career. If it didn't convince, convince you, don't save it. Okay? See how how the um the filters, they, they overlap and they are going to give you like a road to the things that you really are good at and the things that you feel passionate for. Now, some other factors come in here, like, you know, that you are gonna have to, which schools, maybe Teresa can talk about this more, which schools are better for this? Um, what kind of, I don't know, financial aid you could find. Um, but this is in a very uh, short summary, how you can use this tool. And I always, always tell the kids you don't have any idea how powerful this tool could be because this not only relates to what major i'm going to choose but to your own life how people perceive me how do i perceive people and the more that the family understands this uh, tool you are going to be able to respect each other more because you are going to understand the point of view of everyone. Believe me, I use this tool with, with my own kiddos. My, they are already professionals and grown. But when we talk about this um, and then we learn and we discuss, you know, now I understand why you are not able, for example, to, um, uh, to read a map. Okay, and I won't get mad because I know that I have that strength and I'll do it instead of telling you, do it. Um, okay, so let me stop here. And that's it. I know it was a little bit long and believe me, for you at home, it's gonna take longer. It's gonna take weeks, but take advantage of this tool because um, boys and girls, if you take advantage of this, life is going to be so much easier for you. You don't see it right now, but in the future, you will understand why. Because you know, my generation, if we had this kind of tools, when we were deciding, what do I, you know, where am I gonna go? What am I gonna study? We wouldn't have been suffering so much or taking the wrong majors and changing majors and wasting time. But with this tool, we can avoid that, okay? I'll be happy to answer any questions. Teresa, I don't know if you have anything to add. Um, thank you, Anna. No, uh, if you have any questions, so let us know. Thank you, Ana Maria. Um, do you know if you 
haven't taken the test, if any of you have not taken the vocational test, please let us know. We will send you the, the link to do that. So, and um, if you don't know how to get to the report also, so um, we can help you with that. That's also important. So it's, I mean, as Ana Maria said, you can actually get a lot of, you know, like um, um, input from that, you know, um, from that test, okay, from the results. So even though sometimes we think, yeah, I might take, you know, you have the passion, you have your talents, and you might take, you know, like in 11 years, you might take a course that probably is something new for you. So it might be that, you know, your interest may change, yes. So, mm -hmm. but at least that is something that you, you may consider, you know, later on. So it might be that, you know, you have new interests and that is okay. As an, an Anna said, is not a, I mean, nothing is, a, I mean, it's not good, it's not bad, it's your own result, what matters. And I don't want to, I mean, we don't want to discourage anybody. Sometimes a student approach to me and say, that is, I want to be a doctor and it doesn't show on my report. I mean, it doesn't mean that we don't want to discourage anybody. We want to give you new options, you know, like to see, to explore a little bit more about your profile, to see based on your talents. So what are some options, you know, that are open for you? But uh, yeah, this is just the beginning for you. You are still in ninth grade. And yes, I mean, we still have, you know, like some years to go. But um, I mean, it's it's a good start, okay? When you um, really get, you know, like uh, to read that report, understand a little bit more about yourself. And also the report give you, you know, like statements about yourself, you know, some of the options, you know, that in 11th grade, at the end of 11th grade, you need to write a lot of the essays that are mainly about your talents. So describe, and some universities will ask, um, tell me about yourself, you know, what, what talents do you have? So you can actually get a lot from the report as well. So, um, so we encourage you to please, yeah, read that report, take the time, as Ana Maria said, to read it, go through it, and um, well, uh, let us know if you have any question, okay? Um, thank you, Ana. Um, oh, you're welcome. And you mentioned something very important that I, I forgot. Um, you have not only the very long report, but you have the short one that she mentioned, and it has those crucial questions for an interview, um, for a resume that says, how do you describe yourself? What are your strengths? You have it there in a few words. There is a short report and a long report. The short report is very important for you to keep handy, okay? So that when you have when you have that question, the answer is going to pop up immediately because you know the results of your test. Okay, and how how accurate this test, uh, Hendrik? Remember, it is as accurate as you answer it. Okay, the input that you put in the test is so important. Remember, this is like a machine. The input, if it is good input, is going to have good outputs. If what the input is not good or accurate, of course you won't get accurate results. So it's up to you. Right. So we are going to continue with the, the next part of the presentation. It's mainly about what are the courses that you may be taking next year. As I said before, you can have one, a one-on-one -on -one class with um, either Isabel or myself. So we... Um, if there is and there is one, I want to make sure to show you the, the link where it is. It's exactly, let me look for it because I was trying, I, I lost the connection, sorry. Um, in your, where you register, you have, and uh, here, let me, okay. Yeah, here. You have the possibility to have the in January class. So you have the January 101 class, okay? In here, you can see, so it's, this is the file that you have, that your student have to for registration for every month. So you have the 101 class and you can register here for um, the dates, the time that it, it, if you wish. So we will be able to help you 101, okay? But mainly 
each one of you, I mean, you know how to get into school links by now. And what we want is to make sure, you know, like everybody will look at the file. So when you get into your um, 101 in your school links, so you have all, you know, like the, the endorsement that you are, remember endorsement. So you have like five endorsements. And let's say some of you may not know which endorsement you are, most probably you are in the multidisciplinary because the multidisciplinary is the most flexible one. So you only need to have like four English, four math, four social studies, and four science by the end of the, you know, the, 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 the school by the end of high school. And that is the requirement to graduate. Each one of these will have a requirement. So it is important, you know, like, and what something that is actually very easy is to change endorsement. If you are in an endorsement that you feel like, okay, I'm not in the right one, you can talk to your counselors and they can change you at any time. So the most important is, you know, like to make sure if you think that, okay, based on the test, you know, on the result, go through the, your results and look at your talent, your passion. Based on that, you could see, okay, where would be, you know, the best fit, which one would be the best fit for you, okay? So you could, you know, like if you click, this one is in the school link, that's, I don't have, you know, like the, the I mean, the possibility to get into your school links, but in here you have, you know, like the, all the options, let's say from STEM. So here are all the options that you have. So if I am interested in computer science, okay, I'm going to click computer science. I'm going to see, you know, like, okay, this is what they tell me, you know, what are the levels that I should actually study? I should go first if I'm interested in that. So I should take introduction introduction to computer science. Okay, that is the first one. I I. I mean, they put it this way because these are requirements. So this level one, level two. So I should go to, if I am interested, at least take the first one if you haven't taken that. And then as, I mean, computer science, as you know, most of the, I mean, you will use it anyways. So there are some classes that actually it's it's great to take them, even though you are thinking, okay, I'm not going to go in today's area, but it is going to help you, you know, like basically for all the careers. So what we want you to see, you know, like I know you haven't actually got yet your list of the courses that you may be taken, but we want you to make to make sure that you go to a school link, just see. And I we know that last year you took, you know, like um, the path that you thought you will be thinking. So the good thing is that you can change it every year. So where do you think that you would like, what, what are the classes you think you can take, okay? And then, so based on that, you could see, you know, like, okay, what are the courses that you will be taking for next year? So here are all the options uh, for, let's say, computer science, business and industry. So you have all these options of courses that you may be taking. To be honest, I mean, what we would like you to do is, you know, like to see what are the possible courses. And also remember, the idea is to maximize somehow. I mean, it depends if you want to. It's it's hard to have a balance because you want to take classes, you know, that, um, of course, feel your passion. But also it's important to make sure, you know, that I don't take like, all advanced classes. If I know that for me, it's hard. Let's say that. English um, might be a difficult class for me. So you already got a semester, you had a semester in, in high school and you know more or less, okay, which one are your strengths? Which one are your weaknesses? So make sure, you know, like you have a balance in your life. So we don't want you to get all your classes cap, all your classes advanced. And then what happened? that the GPA is really low, it doesn't help us. I mean, it's better to have academic class and at the end, you know, like to have a balance that you feel happy, you have an A's on those academic classes and it's gonna help a lot for your GPA unweighted. Remember, we need a balance, okay? So we have the weighted GPA, which is based on five. And yes, you are trying to have the classes, you know, as many as you could advance, but 
If you have seen that past semester you did great with advanced classes, awesome. So we want to encourage you to continue, you know, for next year, taking all those advanced classes. Someone that can give you a good advice also is your teachers. If you are planning to take it a, an AP class for next year, you know, ask your teachers, you know, I mean, it's also possible, you know, like, if you are not sure, you know, like uh, what the, the what the teacher thinks about yourself, that is also, I would take that advice as well. You know, like how do they see yourself if you are going to take an AP class? So feel like, you know, like what, if you are going to be happy in that class, if you can manage to have those AP classes. For next year, yes, we do. I mean, you do have the possibility to take some AP courses, and also, you know, advanced classes in junior high, in junior, um, sorry, in, in junior year, in 11th grade is where you don't have, most of your classes are not uh, advanced, are either academic or AP courses. So it's, it's harder, you know, to make that decision. For next year, you have a lot of CAP classes that you can take advanced. And I mean, um, what we want is to make sure that you have a balance for all, when you think about your courses, think about what are the courses, you know, that you feel like, okay, I, I feel like I can have an A. Remember that we are going to have um, the high school plan that you did in ninth grade. So we want to update it with your new transcripts. Once you get your transcripts, please feel free to send it to us. We would love to have you to have the transcript in the in College Planner Pro in our, let me show you where you should be putting that. So in College Planner Pro, College Planner Pro, when you have the class that you're, when you get your transcripts, please save it on your uh, profile, okay? So you are gonna save it on the, on your profile, there is one section, one tab. Let me show you. That is, um, I'm gonna get one student. Let me see, Camila, one student. And we want you to upload your transcript. For us, it's going to be very important because we would like to update um, the your your high school plan, the plan that we did at the beginning of um, this previous year, right? So. If you are in your platform, so this is the way it should look when you get into your platform, into your College Planner Pro. So this is the dashboard that you are going to see. If you go into your files tab here, so please, we would like you to add, upload your transcripts in here. Upload my uploaded files, upload your transcript. And for us, it's gonna make our life easier just to go here, check, and update the high school plan, okay? So um, questions about, I know it's very general. And as I said before, we would like you, uh, if you need a one-on-one -on -one class, so if you are not sure about the classes you should be taking next year, let us know. The, let me see. One second, the class, here, I was going to look for the, if you haven't, please uh, written your name on the chat. Please feel, um, please write your names, the student name, because I need to have the attendance to make sure that every who was here before today. And um, let me show you. Okay, in the in the same part that you have to register, so you will have you have the possibility to register for the um, one on one class. I know I showed you before the page. One second. In here, you have a link, please. Use this link to schedule the 101 class, okay, where your name is. Okay, this is from um, January. If you can click on here and um, do it um, in this part. Questions? Right. I don't see any question. Well, thanks for being here today, parents and students. Muchas gracias, papás, por estar acá, los estudiantes. So let us know um, if you need any help. So we um, we will be, well, waiting for you. 
Gracias, papás. Gracias, Ana María, por estar con nosotros el día de hoy. Cuídense mucho. Take care. Oh, one second, one second. Um, okay. The date for... Okay, there is a question, Alberto. Uh, the date for the first... Oh, for the 101. Yeah, in here, Alberto, okay? So if you click on that link, you will be, you will be seeing all the dates. And you might... Let me just click on it. You are going to see at the bottom of the page, you see all these days have been taken, no slot available. So you have, actually you can go back and check, you know, like which one are the days that are available, okay? So you have it here, like um, January, here, the dates. So for next, next week, it's taken. So you have then Wednesday at 4.30, Thursday at 3.30. Sometimes people delete the slot. So you it might show again. So, but right now this is what we have. Okay. So for the week, the next, the week on uh January the 22nd. So there are a lot of spots available. Okay. So you can um click on that and I already have it booked up. I already have it booked up. So where do I see like the date that I booked? Oh, okay, okay. Oh, I see. So you already did it. Okay. Let me yeah. check that because I, I'm not sure, Albert, uh, Alberto. Okay, I'll let you know. So we, when, so please, when you do the schedule, so it should be in the in the next one, but I think we are updating that, that in the page that I showed you before. So we have January 101 in here. So it should be here. So, but um, your name should be here. Okay, so yeah. check to see where I don't see. Okay, I'm gonna check, but it should be in here. Okay. Okay. That's right. Okay. Well, that's it for today. Muchas gracias. Cuídense mucho. Okay. Bye-bye, everybody. Gracias. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank you. Gracias. <laughs>